Hey, welcome back. When I left off last time, I told you that I was trying to figure out a gas tank for this thing. So initially, it had a three-quarter of a gallon gas tank, and I'd like to have a little more than that. To me, a gallon would be minimum. Um, but I started looking around. My original plan was to use a spun aluminum tank, and then when I got looking at those and how large they had to be to hold much fuel, um, I wasn't sure if I liked that idea very much. My initial thought was that maybe I could get a 4 inch diameter by 12 inch long fuel tank, spun aluminum tank, to go up here and it wouldn't be very bulky um, so it wouldn't look too bad on there. But I got out a roll of paper towels, um, just happened to be roughly 4 inches in diameter, a little shy of it by 11 inches long, but decent for mock-up just to give an idea. And I thought, well that's not too bad. But then when I looked up the actual capacity of a tank that size, it's about 0.6 gallons of fuel, so that's worse off than I was. So my next thought was maybe I could use a 6x12. Just go up in the diameter a little because a 6x12 tank would hold about 1.2 gallons of fuel according to the site that I was looking at. Um, so I just used this to mock it up. Just got a windshield washer bottle wrapped in paper um, to make it 6x12. Um, but then when I put that on there, the thing looks so huge to me that I don't really like it. I think I'd rather have the stop gas tank than that. And there's other options. I thought about maybe it could mount up under here, but I don't know that I like that one a whole lot. Um, it could even mount here or possibly be modified to fit there. This, this way isn't terrible, um, but I don't really like any of them a whole lot. There's also this area back here behind the seat. That gives me the option of doing something like I did on T2. It has an 8x12 spun aluminum gas tank that holds 2.5 gallons, so it's got plenty of fuel. I actually really like this tank. It's lightweight. Um, no complaints at all since I've had this on here. I've got plenty of room for it on that scooter or the moped. My only real issue is that I kind of hate to set all of them up the exact same way. Um, I'd like to do something a little different. And then there's the other option that seems to be popular with custom mopeds, and that's the cafe racer look. So basically you take a motorcycle gas tank and you mount it straight across um, over to the seat. You may have to move the seat back. Um, and then usually they have a, a seat that kind of comes up like that. And, you know, you've got some kind of tail section. So it looks more like a motorcycle. Again, a cafe racer style. But I'm not really a fan of that. They look good, but I don't necessarily want to turn this thing into something that looks more like a motorcycle. I actually kind of like the more stripped down look. Um, as opposed to having a huge tank up here and the tail section and all that stuff. I'm not saying I won't come back to it. Um, I may end up with a tank mounted back here or a tank up here because I can't come up with anything better, but I do have another idea. One other thing, this frame tube, it goes all the way from here to here. It was mentioned that maybe I could use that as a gas tank, but I actually took this off and measured the uh, inside diameter measured the length of it, and it looks like it would hold just over four-tenths of a gallon of fuel, so that wouldn't really be a good option that way. Plus, I would always have gas or gas fumes right inside of my frame, and I know that some mopeds actually did use the frame to hold gas, but uh, as much as I modify things and things end up being welded on, ground off, etc. over the years, uh, the idea of always having fuel or gas fumes inside of my frame isn't really a great one to me. And there's also the possibility that maybe I can hide a few wires in here if it's not full of fuel. What I was thinking about is if I could run a 4x12 gas tank over here and another 4x12 gas tank over here. And again, this is not an accurate representation of the size, but kind of close enough. Um, it would give it a totally different look than just having one huge tank up here. Um, and I actually think that would look kind of cool if it could be done right. And it would hold about 1.2, maybe 1.3 gallons of fuel, which would be acceptable to me. The big issue for me with a gas tank setup like this is that I looked online at two 4x12 tanks and those would come out to about $300. And that's in standard configuration, so I'd have a filler on this side and a filler on this side. Um, and really, I'd like to only have one filler. 
So I'd probably have to get them to custom make them and I'm sure that makes the price go up. So you might as well say somewhere between $300 to $400 to have a little over a gallon of gas. And that just cannot happen. I do happen to have 16 gauge, four inch diameter steel exhaust pipe. Just had this out in my shed. Um, I actually used it to make an exhaust for a GY6150, a custom exhaust at one point. So I'm thinking perhaps I can create my two four inch cylinders out of that. Um, I've got a couple of end caps around. I can order a couple more. They're a bit thick, but they worked on the, uh, the muffler, so I'm thinking they can work on there. It's still not going to be easy because, again, I'm not a great welder, but I'm thinking maybe I can use those to make my two side-by-side -side tanks. And I'm still not exactly sure how I want to uh, join them together and mount them because obviously they have to be joined together if I don't want two filler necks and two separate T's on the bottom, which I don't really mind the two T's on the bottom um, or the two outlets on the bottom teed off, but I really don't want two separate filler necks, so they've got to be joined somewhere. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. There's a whole lot of stuff I don't know about that, but I think I'm just going to get started and see if I can't come up with at least the basic cylinders, um, get those together, just see how that's working out for me. If it's a flop, then I may go back to uh, one of the other ideas. These are the pipe caps that I was talking about, and they are 4 inch outside diameter. I think they're actually for uh, fence posts or pipes of some sort. Found them on eBay anyway. Um, and they add about an inch and a half each way. So what I was doing was basically sticking these on the end of uh, this paper towel roll. And I pretty much found what would work there up against the frame. Um, and I decided to go with about a nine and a half inch center section. So it should be about 12 and a half inches total length um, if I get it right. It doesn't look as bad as I expected it to after just one pass, but it's still going to need some work. I used this light and I ran it all the way around the seam while I looked down inside of there. And when I first started, there were two spots where I could see light. I patched those up. Now I can't see light anywhere. That doesn't mean it's going to seal. I'll have to do a pressure test later um, once this tank is closer to finished, but I'm gonna stop working that seam for now. That's only one out of four caps that I'll have to do for this process. 
but I'm a bit tired of it already even though it doesn't look like it on video probably it does take a little while um, so I'm gonna move on for the moment to doing uh, the filler neck and I've got some inch and a half black iron pipe here I'm gonna try and cut that down just a little bit on the outside to smooth it out and then I'm gonna try to cut some threads on the inside and I've got a chunk of two inch aluminum round bar coming and I'm gonna try to cut that as my filler cap gas cap um, I'm also very bad at threading. I've tried it one time, which you've seen in one of my other videos if you watch them all, um, and that didn't go perfectly. But I decided to punish myself and give threading another try with something like this. <laughs> I guess the lathe won that one. I got about halfway through cutting the threads and then it slipped out of gear. It stopped driving the carriage. Hopefully you can see on here about in the center of that is a very wide uh, pathway there and that's where it slipped out of gear and just started spinning in one spot and cut it up. So pretty much I spent an afternoon um, between machining this piece, the inside and outside diameters just where I wanted them. I also had to make a uh, inside thread cutting tool because I didn't have one, so I had to grind that. Uh, setting up the lathe, changing gears, etc. That's basically an afternoon or a little more than an afternoon um, that I've spent on this. And this part is now junk. There's some sort of issue with the lathe because it shouldn't slip out of gear like that. There's probably some sort of issue with the operator because it slipped out of gear when I first started um, and I didn't think much of it. I just thought I hadn't got the, uh, the little lever on the back into the proper position, maybe, and it just slipped out because of me. Um, but I guess there's more going on than just that. I don't really want to spend a bunch of time on this again to go through it all. Um, take the lathe apart as well, try to figure that out right now. So I think again it wins and I'm going to order a filler neck kit. I got the other pipe caps in so I can finish these tubes, but the last pipe caps I had were very flat, and these are not. As you can see, they create big gaps around here because they're cut uneven, so I'm having to grind these down so that I can get them to sit flat on there. got all the end caps welded on now so next I need to come up with a bracket to mount these to the frame. What I'm hoping to do is make a bracket that makes the tanks one piece so that they're attached with the bracket um, and then they bolt on as an assembly instead of having to bolt each tank on and I want to mount them a little bit low maybe like this and that way I'll have some space under here so I can put something on the frame to bolt the brackets to to make it easy to install the whole tank assembly and I could also hide stuff kind of going between the two tanks that way.
it looks like this should do it for a pretty simple bracket. It's two inches wide by eight inches long. Of course I had three inch flat bar, an inch and a half flat bar. Um, three inch would space it out way more than I wanted. Inch and a half would have it running into the frame. So I had to do some extra cutting, but that should work. I don't have it welded on both of them at the moment and it's just tacked on one because I'm thinking about my crossover. So since these are dual tanks and you can see they're not connected anywhere else, what I want to do is put a crossover tube in the bottom of both tanks. So if you see where these marks are, that's roughly going to be where this tube hopefully will end up sitting. Obviously it's going to be here, about up there, but if I can get it to sit roughly where that's showing you, um, that would be the bottoms of the tank or very close to the bottoms of the tank when this is actually mounted to the scooter. So before it's welded together, what I would need to do is drill a hole in each one of these, which I'm sure it's probably going to be fun to get those to correspond just right. Um, and then I can slide this into each one and then weld it in. Um, that way I can get this tube closer to the center of each tank. This is what I came up with. It's a jig to help me drill straight into the cylinder because normally if you try to drill into a cylinder, especially off to the side, anything round, um, it's going to deflect the drill bit and you're probably not going to drill the way you want to. Um, but also to help me drill into the same spot on both of these cylinders. Uh, that way, if, because if I drill in a different location, uh, it could throw off how they're set with one another and make them look weird, one's up further than the other. Um, etc. Um, so it's pretty much a bunch of one inch square steel tubing. Um, I've welded the sides together here. This part is just clamped in. It's the same length as the diameter of this tubing is. Um, and then I just drilled and set my uh, hole up here, my guide, um, right where I thought I would need it to drill into the cylinder. And then I've got a 7 8 inch hole saw here and that will act as a guide for that hole saw. I had actually set this up for drill bits at first and John uh, 190mech on the 49ccscoot.com forums told me that a hole saw would make much quicker work of that and uh, that did make a lot more sense than what I was trying to do so I went and reset it kind of remanufactured it a bit to work with the hole saw instead. Um, so in addition to what you can see here how it's positioning it I've also got these two pegs on the front sort of um, they are basically stops so that I can put a piece of flat steel across there and that allows me to bump the uh, end of this right up against the end of this steel bar and I can do the same thing with the other tank again and it helps to keep them in the same position um, so yeah then I go over this make sure it's level um, make sure this is level as well I can check everything out um, basically just tightening and loosening the vise repeatedly until eventually I get it right um, and set up the way I want it. I thought I screwed this up when I first saw it because it looks so oblong compared to what I was expecting. Um, and if you just put the pipe in there, you can see there's all kinds of room around it. But what I had to remember is that this hole here, the tube, is supposed to come out at basically the same angle of this bracket. So then, when I put the tube in there and angle it like the bracket, now you can see it actually fits the way it's supposed to in there. I'm not sure how obvious this will be from the video looking at it um, but that's another fail for me because this is sitting crooked um, they won't align straight and unfortunately I realized why so if you just look at them if you're just looking straight down at them basically like this looks good if you don't put much thought into it um, because they both match up the angles uh, the widest parts and narrowest parts etc they're all in the same spots uh, just as they should be when you use a jig like I did. The problem is when you rotate them together what you see is that they're both going different directions because they're flipped around now. Um, so this one is kind of off at an angle that way 
this one is kind of off at an angle up this way. And so they just don't want to align properly. Now, if I flip this around like this, which would be of no use to me, uh, then try to put the tube in there. Now they align easily and straighten up with each other. But yeah, that's not going to do me any good. That's not going to fit anywhere. And again, when I flip it around, it's just kind of off a bit when I try to get it lined up there. It just ain't going to work. What that amounts to is I either have to fill this and then re-drill it the proper way somewhere, or I have to totally rebuild this tube and then drill that one the proper way. Just to make sure I'm not totally crazy and I've got the right idea, I've moved this to a different spot, the cylinder, and I have flipped this around so I'm drilling over here instead of over here, and I'm going to see if that works. That did it. As you can see, drilling it that way, now the angle of this bracket and the angle of this is the same. They both want to align parallel with each other easily. Everything would have set up great if I had just flipped that around the proper way before I drilled it last time. I've got a magnet on top of here holding the piece that came out of there in. And you can see that's a really large gap. That gap in some spots is actually thicker than the 16 gauge steel that it's made up of. And it's like that all the way around. So I don't know that that's going to work trying to weld that back in place. But at this point, I figured, what do I have to lose? Because if I don't weld that up, this entire tube is ruined anyway. So if I ruin it welding it up, oh well. Not exactly pretty but I'm not gonna build an entirely new cylinder with it looking that way it's basically just some indentations and actually the weld was out here and um, the center was sunken down because even with that magnet across there trying to hold it up somehow it got sunken down below the level that it normally would be at so I went across it after I ground that down I went across with a very low voltage pass and tried to fill in the center um, but I'm not going to keep welding and welding and welding on this. If I want it to look any better than that, then at some point I'll just have to use some body filler or something. Before this crossover tube goes in, I want to install a bung here for 8th inch NPT. That way I can put a fitting on there uh, for my fuel outlet. And I bought this from McMaster Car. I think it was like $4. It's already tapped for 8th inch NPT. So I just figured that would save me a few minutes. I am going to modify it a little bit, uh, cut it in half basically. So I can have two fittings out of this one piece. I also cut it so that it'll drop into a half inch hole and not fall through just to make it easy to install. this set up how I want it now with a little bit of help from some magnets and weight from hammers to hold it in place and I'm going to start sticking it together. I've got the bracket welded in as much as I'm going to weld it in, probably more than I really need to, but basically three spots on each side, done top and bottom. And while I did that I went ahead and left this, uh, the crossover tube, still loose. That's welded up now and didn't really go well because part way through my welding mess decided to stop darkening and I tried to just keep working through it. Maybe not the best idea, but uh, I'm going to have to get a new mask I guess because I took it apart, thought that maybe I could replace these batteries inside here and they are really on there. 
Like I tried something sharp under there, razor, and it doesn't seem like they want to come off. If they do, it's probably going to rip the whole uh, wire or whatever there. And I'm hoping to save this. I'm going to order a new mask, um, which is probably going to take a few days at least. And I'm hoping to save this so that maybe I can at least use it for some tack welds uh, just to put things in place so I'm not at a total standstill with this. Seems like a good time for some more lathe work. So what I'm going to try to do is take this piece of one inch steel round bar and turn it into three mounts that eventually I'll weld up here underneath the frame so that I can bolt the gas tank on. And I'm going to use M8 by 1.25 millimeter bolts because I figure that should be way more than sufficient to hold the weight of this gas tank as well as roughly a gallon of fuel. There's all three of them finished up, all tapped all the way through. You can see I left the lip on there, um, cut this to 7 8 of an inch. This is still one inch. That way it's easy to recess these into the frame. Um, all the same amount. This is an eighth inch thick on every one of these. Um, and that'll put my spacing for the tanks where I want it. I'm going to get this piece out of the way before I start trying to put mounts up here. still a lot of work to do but it is kind of nice to finally have it mounted so I can stand back and see what it looks like. The filler neck just came in so I'm at least going to see if I can get that set up and tacked in place. Just in case it's of interest. I'm a little bit disappointed being a professionally made product that this thing has really rough threads here. I may have to try and clean those up or something myself. Even to the point that it can be hard to thread in there. You can see just regular pressure. It doesn't want to go there. I have to actually twist it a bit to get it going. A little bit of filing made the cap a lot easier to get on and off. And I've got it in the lathe now because they also left a really sharp edge right here. So I'm just going to knock that off real quick. And then I'll flip it around and I'm going to put a chamfer on here just to make it a little better for welding on later.
As you can see, I've also installed a 90 degree brass fitting for quarter inch hose into the filler neck because I'll need the top of this tank to attach to the top of the tank on the other side. That way they can equalize pressure so they're both vented. Um, and that was the easiest way, I think, to do it on this tank. I made sure to install that just below the deepest that the cap can go into the filler neck. And I also cut the brass fitting down, that way it doesn't protrude into there. Initially I said I was going to go ahead and get this tacked on today, but I think I'm just going to wait for the welding helmet to show up and do it all at once. For the connection on this tank, I've got another steel 8th inch NPT bung modified on the lathe so that this part fits into a half inch hole. And obviously I'll drill the very top of the tank here. My new welding helmet came in so I can get back to work after about a week of delay. I do want to say this is a Yes Welder M800H. I got it for about $62 on eBay and I also picked up Lincoln Electric headgear to replace the uh, stock headgear in here because a lot of the reviews said that the headgear in this broke within the first two weeks. Some of them said the first time they used it so I didn't want to take a chance on that. So altogether, I got about $90 into this, and I have to say, I have used it because I originally recorded this when I first got the helmet, and then somehow deleted the clip accidentally, so now I'm re-recording it, and I have used this helmet. Um, I do like it quite a bit better than what I used to have, largely because the adjustment actually works for the darkening. Uh, my other one, I could change the dial all I wanted, and I really couldn't see much difference in how dark it was, so that helps me see the weld a little bit better. Um, it also has a replaceable battery, so hopefully... It will last for even longer than my last one did and it's got a larger viewing area as well as a little bit closer to actual color um, instead of just seeing green all the time so pretty happy with this helmet if anybody's interested in a welding helmet um, I would at least say maybe it's worth checking out So I got the filler neck welded in, as well as this bung over here. So now, with everything welded up, the next step is to do a pressure test. So basically I have to seal this thing off, pump some pressure in here, and find out how bad it leaks. I would say find out if it leaks, but I'm certain that it's going to leak. I'm just hoping that it's not a nightmare trying to get it sealed up. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is install all of my fittings. Um, and use some thread sealing on there and I'll also have to cap all of those off uh, to get that to seal up. Next I need some way to pressurize the tanks so I just hooked up my two-stroke leak tester and that's pretty much a bunch of tubing. I've got a pressure gauge in line. For most of the testing that I do you don't need a gauge that goes over 5 to 7 psi um, you need an air supply of some sort. In this case, it's just a blood pressure bulb. Um, and I have a shutoff valve in line now. It can shut off the air supply. In this case, I basically just use that so that once I get it pumped up, I don't have to worry about the uh, bulb here leaking. The next step is actually to put the pressure into the system. So what I'm going to try to do is pump this up. Ideally, I'd like to see it go up to something like 6 PSI and just sit there and not move. Again, I don't think that's going to happen. There's pretty much no chance that that's going to happen. Um, but that's what we're aiming for in the end, is that this thing, you can pump it up and your gauge will not lose pressure. But for now, basically, I'm going to pump it up. Um, if it'll hold any pressure, then you've got to start looking for where the pressure is leaking. So you can see it's taking a lot of pumping just to try and work it up near 1 PSI. And if I let off... It drops pretty quickly, so I've definitely got a leak somewhere. Normally what I do is use some sort of soap and water solution and just spray it down, and wherever it's leaking you should see bubbles. In this case, I can clearly hear a hissing noise coming from somewhere around the pickup area. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I can hear it somewhere in this area, so I know to pinpoint that first. So I'm going to spray this area. And now I'll pump it up and look for bubbles. And I got bubbles all over the place. Now you can really hear it.
I had the entire area covered in soap before, so now I'm going to try to pinpoint it a little better by just spraying small sections and not spraying so much of the soap and water solution. Now I can see that I've got at least two small leaks in this area. There's one right here by this pile of bubbles. Looks like it's right about there. And then there's one right here in this corner. Now I'll need to patch these up with a welder. So I just put some markings near the holes. That way I can find them a little bit easier. I went around and fixed this side and it took a couple tries in some spots, but it didn't go too badly. And then I got to this side and you can see I've made a mess of that. I've got a whole pile of weld here because I tried and tried and tried and I spent hours on this. And every time I fixed a little piece, I would find a, another tiny little leak somewhere just near that. And I just cannot get that to seal uh, totally. It seals a lot better than it did, but it won't totally seal. I've got tiny little leaks there. So I'm going to take a break from that for a minute. So I went around and found some other leaks. I've got a little pinhole leak here and here on this port as well, or this bung. Um, and then I found some spots where I'd welded the caps to the cylinders in multiple areas, uh, top and bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and patch those up just to give me a break from this, which I think I'm probably going to grind that down and kind of start over to some degree. This thing has frustrated the crap out of me to the point that I wanted to hit it with a hammer yesterday and I decided that was about time to go inside the house and leave it alone for a little bit um, because I actually switched gears off of the pickup tube, decided not to work on that just yet. Um, you can see it's foaming here right now with about 10 PSI in there. Um, and I decided that I wanted to patch up the little spots elsewhere on the tanks first. See if I could get those to seal before I went back into that. Um, and I would weld and grind and pressure test and it would leak again and just repeat that process over and over. Um, so I started changing things up a little bit and I started using more heat in the welder. Um, as much as I could, about double what I normally would weld certain areas on here with um, and that seemed to help a little bit and also um, in addition to cleaning and grinding before I started each weld I would fire up the propane torch and hit that area for maybe 10 to 20 seconds um, and I could see some moisture evaporating away even after I had cleaned it and such um, so I think that helped a little bit and then the other thing I've done is I just gave up on grinding some of these areas down so I may run into a more trouble when I actually grind these down but right now it's sealed um, the only real problem I had with that this area has a real big nasty bulge of a weld on here because I burned all the way through there trying to crank it up to about double the heat um, I burned through probably made about a quarter inch to three eighths inch hole in there and then had to patch that up but right now Everything that I'd found aside from the pickup tube is sealed and So I'm gonna move on I'm gonna see if I can grind this stuff down and still get it to seal or not because I've got spot here Some down here um, I think there's another on the other tank. Yeah, not a whole lot of stuff, but uh, one there and I also made some had to add a little bit up here around the filler neck in a couple of spots. I don't know how much I'll grind those down anyway. But yeah, I'm going to try and see if I can get them, at least in these areas, ground down so that uh, it blends in with the tank again and see if I can still have it sealing. It took a few tries, but I did finally get all the spots patched up so that they're not leaking. And now I'm down to just the pickup tube area down here. I've got a leak at the actual fitting connection here, but it's not the weld, it's where the fitting goes into the bung, so that's not a big deal. And my tester is leaking up here and doesn't want to quit leaking. Um, but at that it's still holding pressure pretty steadily, so I think if I can get this uh, pickup tube area ground down and sealed up, then I should be good to go.
I ground it down, but I didn't try to take every bit of the weld off because I was afraid to open it up and cause myself a whole lot of headaches that I don't need. Um, but I just took the huge clumps off of there. And it really didn't open up any more leaks than I already had. I've just got a pinhole here. I've got some couple of pinhole leaks around the back for the most part. Um, and that seems to be about it. Basically, it looks like what happens is I'll have something like a pinhole leak here. I weld over it, and then I'm not sure if it doesn't melt enough or what happens. It's not hot enough. Um, but basically, I put a clump over that, and then it just finds a way around that clump. It doesn't seal. Um, so I'm going to try and use a good bit of heat, like I have the other ones, heat it first, and see if maybe I have a better result this time. All right, I've got this thing so at 10 PSI, I can spray the whole tank, flip it around, etc., and look around, and I can't find anything leaking aside from these fittings here and the tester itself. And it only took forever. Just for a little further proof, I'm going to try and submerge the tanks in water and see if I find anything else. Any air bubble streaming up to the top will tell me that there's a leak. So and you can see, this is one of the fittings that I knew was leaking, and there's a stream of air bubbles, very tiny air bubbles coming up toward the top of the tank. So if I find that anywhere other than a fitting, then I've got a leak somewhere that I'm concerned about. I was pretty sure I was going to find at least a couple of pinhole leaks that I had missed with my spray testing. Uh, because submerging it in water will easily find pretty much anything. But I actually didn't find anything other than the leaks that I already knew about. So that was a nice surprise. Now that it's sealed, I'm curious to find out what the actual volume of the tank is because I calculated that I should get 1.2 gallons, roughly. Um, I didn't take into account the hemispheres here at the end, the crossover tube. Um, so it could be a little bit different. But I've got some water here and a graduated cylinder, and I'm going to go ahead and fill it up, measuring what I put in there. That way I can know for sure. I've got it filled right up to the bottom of the filler neck and that took on the nose 4,400 milliliters. Knowing the capacity is great, but I also want to find out if I can get that out of the tank because it could be that my pickup tube design is very inefficient and I leave a lot of fuel in the tank that I can't use. So this is actually sitting up on my workbench at roughly a 45 degree angle, about the same as it is on the moped when it's mounted. So I'm going to put the gas cap in place just so everything's as it would be if I were using the moped. Now I can open up the shutoff valve and drain the water into this graduated container again and measure how much actually comes out of there. Hopefully you'll be able to see that this is about 360 milliliters of water and I also drained out four 1,000 milliliter uh, containers full of water. So 4,360 milliliters of water drained and it held 4,400 milliliters of water. I plugged those numbers into a calculator and 4,400 milliliters is about 1.162 US gallons. 4,360 milliliters is about 1.152 US gallons. So I'm leaving about a hundredth of a gallon in the tank and I fell just short of my 1.2 gallon um, estimation when I built the tank. But that's pretty close and I'm really happy with both numbers. Even though I've already made sure the fuel tank is sealed, I'm going to take it a step further and use this fuel tank sealer made by POR15. And basically that's a rust preventative and it's capable of sealing very small leaks. Um, so more or less for me that's trying to future proof the tank because I did put a lot of effort into making the thing. Um, so I'm hoping that helps it last longer and I have used this in the past on another scooter gas tank and I know that it provides a very tough coating inside of there. So before using the actual sealer the tank needs to be cleaned and prepped. POR15 offers a three-step um, setup here for fuel tanks 
which has the sealer, metal prep, and then they have a cleaner degreaser. Um, I already had metal prep left over from the last tank that I did, and I bought some fresh fuel tank sealer. Um, I opted not to get their cleaner degreaser because it's really aimed at um, heavy rust and corrosion, and I thought I would just clean my tank out with mineral spirits, and I'm going to throw some BBs in the tank when I do that and shake it around. That way, if I've got any kind of slag in there from welding or anything, I want to try and break it loose now um, rather than have it break loose when it's actually supplying fuel to the bike. Before I move on, I want to mention that when you're working with these chemicals, you at least want to be in a very well ventilated area and have some sort of eye protection and gloves. But it's also a good idea to make sure you read each of the containers and follow all of the manufacturer's safety precautions. Also before I start, you may notice that I have fuel fittings installed in my gas tank. And if you read the instructions from POR15, they tell you to remove all fittings, petcocks, etc. Um, before you start this process. Normally I would go along with their directions and I would advise that you do because I don't know if this is going to work out great. But I'm going to try and leave these in and hope that the sealer actually seals these fittings um, very well into my tank because I have no plans of taking these out at any point. So I'm just hoping that will give me a good seal. Um, and I believe there will be a risk of clogging these passageways, any small passageways with the sealer. So I've already got some wire that I found that I can get through these fittings. So when I do the actual fuel tank sealer coating, I'll be able to run the wire through there and hopefully make sure they don't get clogged. Okay, so now the first step for me is going to be to pour in some of these steel BBs. And then I'm going to also pour in my mineral spirits. And then I'll use some duct tape, or actually it's Gorilla Tape in this case, to seal off the filler neck. And the reason that I'm not using my gas cap is because it's vented. I think it took me about 15 to 20 minutes to get the very last BB out of there because of this pickup tube set up where it's sitting in kind of the center of this other cylinder. But eventually I got it. So now I'm just going to start pouring water in there and sloshing that around, draining it until I see my water coming out clear. Now I'm going to use the POR15 metal prep. As you saw, I was blowing hot air through there with a heat gun. It says that it doesn't have to be totally dry inside to use the metal prep, but I did try to make sure I got most of the moisture out. So what this is supposed to do is basically prep the tanks for the POR15 tank sealer, and it says it provides a zinc phosphate coating. I'm going to roll this around and try to make sure I get a little bit of it in contact with all areas to begin with. And then I need to sit it in different positions and leave it for 30 minutes at a time until I've maneuvered it around enough that the metal prep has had time to sit on pretty much all positions inside of the tank. Now the metal prep has to be rinsed out thoroughly with water. I flushed the tank multiple times with water and now I need to make sure that it is bone dry according to the wording of the instruction before the fuel tank sealer can go in. So what they advise is to use a heat gun or a hair dryer and to blow hot air through the tanks 
um, because they say it's not going to dry thoroughly any other way. And this needs to be done relatively quickly because it will flash rust after it's been treated. So I'm just going to let this sit here. Um, I've got all my ports open. I'm going to let that sit there for a while and dry the tanks out. The tank should be dry now, so I'm basically ready to put this tank sealer in. But first I've got to open it up and stir it thoroughly. I just made up a paper funnel to pour this in, that way I don't have to worry about this product doing anything to any of my other funnels. And the whole tank goes in, or the whole can, excuse me. Once again, I'm going to seal the filler neck off with duct tape. And then the tanks get rolled around so that this can touch every area of the inside of the tanks. And they don't really tell you how long to roll it around, they just say to roll it around and make sure that everything is coated. But I'm probably going to do this for somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes because I really want to make sure I get a good coating on everything. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove my tape over the filler neck and start by draining there. They actually say to drain this for at least 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to have to move it around a bit because I want to make sure I get it all out of there um, since I have a kind of a weird configuration here. Um, but I'll start with the biggest hole there being the filler neck. And then I'll probably move over to the vise after that and let it drain out of other orifices for a little while. Now it'll have to sit here for at least a half an hour. While it's sitting here, I've got some wire and I'm just going to run it through my uh, fittings here just to be 100% certain that they don't get clogged up. I let that sit in the vise for about 45 minutes until it wasn't dripping at all. And then I took it back out and I went through every one of these barbs here with a piece of wire to make sure they weren't clogged. And I went over the threads inside of there again with a soft cloth um, just to make sure that the stuff doesn't coat the thread so much that the gas cap won't work anymore. So now this needs a full four days or 96 hours to cure before gasoline can be used in there. Uh, for me that doesn't really matter because it's going to be way more than four days before this thing has gas in it. But if you use it on anything make sure to wait at least four days. Um, then all the excess that comes out of there, everything that drains out, they tell you to put back into the can and to leave that at least overnight and it should harden up and then it can just be disposed of in the garbage. It cannot be reused. Also don't put the lid back on it and seal it because they say it can explode. Another thing to be mindful of, especially if you're doing this to a painted gas tank or finished gas tank, is if you spill any of the metal prep or the POR15 sealer, make sure you clean it up immediately. So there's a little bit of the metal prep that dripped out while I was uh, rolling it around and such. And you can see it stained that. To me, not a big deal. I've got to sand this down anyway. And that's where some of the metal prep spilled onto my metal workbench. The fuel tank still needs cosmetic work, but the construction is done at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. Obviously, this is not a strict how-to video. Um, not really a smart idea to build a gas tank with a flux core welder. There are a lot better choices out there. It's kind of the hard way to do it. Um, but at any rate, maybe you've learned something along the way. If nothing else, perhaps you enjoyed watching it. Um, so if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more. And thanks for watching.